Hello, welcome back to my kitchen and hello for the first time. Hope you're doing okay. Uh, today is the 7th of January and in January we have Burns Night. So you've already seen the title, obviously, um, but today we're going to make haggis bonbons. Haggis bonbons, if you don't know, are basically just wee balls of haggis that are coated in breadcrumbs and fried. I'm going to make it with uh, peppercorn and whiskey sauce and mashed potatoes. You can make them with like a salad and balsamic vinegar dressing or whatever if you want to be a wee bit healthier but I'm going to make it as like a main meal but you can have it as a starter or whatever. I just find it's something a wee bit different so you're not just having haggis, neeps and tatties on Burns Night. I'm, just, I'm going to try and do a nice slow relaxed video because I always try and do all of this in one go and I cannot get a breath in me today, not through Covid, just because I'm pretty sure my lungs are like up here somewhere. I'm just going to take my time. In the spirit of taking my time, I've already made my mashed potato, which is sitting here. <laughs> um, I'm not going to show you making mash obviously, because I've already made it, but also because my last video is a steak pie video and I show you how I make my mash in that. Again, it's just mashed potatoes, it's not that exciting. If you want to see though, I'll put it in whatever corner the eye is usually in. I'll put the steak pie video there. You can click on there and then see how I make my mashed potato. <laughs> but for now, we're going to start with the haggis. So, I've already washed my hands, but I'm going to take my rings off just now because we need to like roll these up. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a vegetarian haggis one and a normal haggis one and the reason for that is because I didn't eat meat before I was pregnant and now that I am pregnant I am eating meat because for some reason it's the only thing I want to eat, it's the only thing I can keep down more importantly but I'm not quite brave enough to eat the meat haggis yet but I want to make a vegetarian variant so that I can eat it and not hopefully feel terrible so this is going to be a hit or miss because I've not tried haggis while pregnant. So we'll see how that goes. I've got a pink bowl for the meat one and a white bowl for the non-meat one. So I'm using Simon Howey haggis just because I am. It was easy to get and tons of it in the, in the supermarkets. This is what the vegetarian one looks like. Which you probably don't care about because it's vegetarian haggis. Uh, this is the packaging for the normal one. So I'll show you what it looks like when we open it up. There's our haggis. It's a wee ball of haggis. Um, all we're going to do is basically cut this plastic sheet off. It's not in a stomach of any kind. Um, probably for costs. If I owned a company that made haggis, I probably wouldn't put the stomachs. All we're going to do is basically cut through this plastic. That is haggis for anyone who wishes to know what haggis looks like. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> I know that a lot of people in America and stuff are really curious about haggis, so that's what this haggis looks like. So all I'm going to do is peel off this plastic and plop it in the bowl. Now the vegetarian haggis is not dissimilar, it's almost the exact same, like looks wise. Um, just got a little bit more lentils in it. The vegetarian haggis can be a lot more denser, a lot stickier. So yeah. That's vegetarian haggis. It's um, got lentils and stuff in it. Again, same idea. We're just going to take it out of its wee plastic jacket. So we'll wash our hands a wee bit. Well, we'll wash our hands. Cool. So we'll do the, the meat one first. So I've got a spoon here and I'm literally just going to break the haggis up in the bowl. As I'm breaking it up, I can smell it. This haggis smells really nice. It actually just smells, it smells quite sausagey actually. So now the haggis is all broken up and it's like crumbly and whatnot, I'm now going to roll it up into balls. So anywhere between like 20 to 25 grams per ball of haggis is fine. So I have my scales with a Tupperware lid wrapped in tin foil just so that it doesn't roll off the scales. And I'm basically, with clean hands, just going to grab bits of haggis and start squishing them to make a wee ball. That's it. Nothing exciting. And your scales turn off just as you put it on. So that's 25 grams. So 
Now, I make wee balls. Um, you don't need to make wee balls, you can make like wee cylinders. So it's almost like a croquette shape. So that is, let's see if I can focus. That is one ball so far. Um, we're going to deep fry these, so I wouldn't really go in and pass 25 grams per ball um, because we're deep frying them in this state. So the deep frying process is what's going to cook the actual haggis. Anything bigger, you're not going to cook the inside of the haggis. Buddha, you're so full of sass. Are you alright? Oh, you're there. Are you okay? No. So I've made two balls so far. I'm now going to do that to the rest of this and then I'll be back. There's no point watching me make all those balls. But you know what we're doing so far. Hello. So, what you've missed is I've rolled up all the haggis, vegetarian and non-vegetarian, and the wee balls, I want to put them on a plate, cover them in cling film, and I've put them in the fridge. So I want the wee balls to go really hard in the fridge before I fry them. So they're in there chilling out. Put them in there for like half an hour before you start frying them and stuff. So as I said at the start of this video, I'm just trying to take things calmly. So in the spirit of that, we're going to make the sauce just now. So for the sauce, we have this stuff. So we have uh, 300 millilitres of beef stock. We've got like a tablespoon of cracked pepper. So this is, I just used black peppercorns and then like sat and ground them for like 45 years. And then we have double cream, we have whiskey and we have salt. So that's what you're going to need. Okay, so it's not the best angle in the world, but hey ho, that's what it is. So we have a pot on, on like a medium heat. We're going to fire our 300 millilitres of beef stock in. And we're just going to warm this stock up now. While we're doing that, we're going to measure our cream. So we need 225 millilitres of cream. I'm just using the same uh, jug because why not? It's all going the same place. I've written down a tablespoon of pepper, but pepper scares me. <laughs> As a peppercorn sauce right enough, so it does have to be peppery. So I'm not going to put all the pepper in straight away. I'm going to put probably three quarters of it in just at, at the start. And then we're going to taste as we go because we should be doing that anyway. So we'll bung in most of this pepper. If you're braver than me, bung it all in. Once you're happy that your stock is like warm, then put your cream in. I'm just going to use a wee spatula to get all the, the cream out. Give that a wee mixy booty. Try and get the pepper off the sides. I'm going to use two tablespoons worth of whiskey. Uh, two tablespoons is like 30 millilitres. So use anywhere between 30 to 35 millilitres, I would say. Or just go mental and use whatever you want. So this is Johnny Walker Black Label. So it's a decent whiskey. And basically that's it. All we're going to do now is stir it and reduce it into a sauce. And obviously try it as we go. So we'll leave that to simmer, do its thing, get nice and thick and tasty and whatnot. We'll try a bit and see if we need to add salt and pepper. We will need to add salt definitely, but we'll see if we need to add any more pepper to it. Hello, so it's been like five minutes um, of just simmering this. You can see it's changed a nice colour, it's went dark and stuff, lovely. But we're just waiting to thicken up a wee bit. It has thickened up a fair bit. If I take it off the heat and it stops bubbling, you can see that it has thickened up a fair bit. But we want it a wee bit thicker than that, I think. Not far off, but we're getting there. Also, while the camera was off, I absolutely just braved it and put the rest of that pepper in. So we'll see how it tastes. I'm going to taste a bit just now. And it's caught in the spoon quick. Bye! It's coating the spoon quite nice, so it is thickening up. I've already salted this as well, so it doesn't need any more salt. So I just went and cleaned my whisk off. After tasting it, it doesn't need any more salt. I have salted it a little bit off camera, so it doesn't need any more salt. It's absolutely fine the way it is, we just need to thicken it. Um, it is very peppery, but peppercorn sauce, what do you expect? I would say that's it. So you probably can't tell, but Let's have a look, see if we can... Look, it's quite thick. But not like wallpaper paste thick, you know? 
So we'll pour it into a junk and then we will finish off our haggis balls. Hello, welcome back. So here we have the vegetarian ones and here we have the non-vegetarian ones. We're gonna breadcrumb them all and then put them back in the fridge. Just for now, like 20 minutes or so. The breadcrumbs that I use is a mixture of golden breadcrumbs and fine breadcrumbs. I like the taste of golden breadcrumbs. They're usually used for like fish and stuff like that. Um, but they're nice. So that's what I use. So I'm just gonna plonk them in there. And then we have some flour, which we're gonna season. And then we have some egg, which we've just beat. So we're just gonna put some salt in our flour. We're not gonna pepper our flour because we have lots of pepper in our sauce. FYI, I am terrible at like the dry hand, wet hand technique, but if you've got that down, this is gonna be your gig. You're gonna be great at this. Take the balls that you've made, reshape them, make them all nice and round. I keep saying balls. Bonbons, let's call them bonbons. It's fancy to call them bonbons. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do flour, egg, breadcrumb, then we're gonna do egg, breadcrumb. So flour, egg, breadcrumb, egg, breadcrumb. And again, just like before, I'll show you a couple and then I'll turn the camera off and I'll do the rest off camera because this video could be like two hours long by the time I've actually shown you how to do everything if I keep you here. But if I just go do it, then you get the gist. You know what, you know what you're doing. Buddha, oh my God. That noise was Buddha sniffing Bronson's ear. My dogs don't do anything delicately, apparently. My God. Now, obviously you can see there's quite a lot, lot of balls here and we're not gonna use all of them. Um, but I had to use up all the haggis. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna breadcrumb the ones I'm gonna use tonight. And then um, any other ones, I'll just freeze. Just put them in the freezer and then I can have them another time. Right, at this angle you see more of my belly than you see like anything else, but that's fine. We're going to take our haggis ball, we're going to plonk it in the flour. We're then going to egg it, see with a wet hand. And then we're going to breadcrumb it. Okay. And then we're going to go back into the egg. And then we're going to go back into the breadcrumbs. And then voila, we have one haggis bonbon. <laughs> we just need to do that another five million times and then maybe we can have dinner. So as I say, I'm just going to do that five million more times and then we'll come back once they're all done and then I'll show you how we cook them. So, I'll see you later. Hello, we're back over here. The reason we're back over here is because we're heating oil because we're going to fry our haggis bonbons. So I am using vegetable oil. I've used, was that one litre? And I've put it in this pot. This pot is actually designed for frying stuff. It's got a wee basket and whatnot. Um, we're trying to get the oil to 170 degrees and it has to stay there. Um, so right now, all the haggis bonbons have been rolled and they've been put into the fridge again just to firm up um, and then they'll come out and they'll be fried once we reach the temperature. Um, we never fry anything in this house. Um, this pot I actually have for caramel because it's great for caramel. It doesn't stick. Um, I got it for £3 or something like that at Yasda. Oil terrifies me. It is scary. Scary biscuits. So we need to be very careful around about this. If you're young, don't do this, please, thanks. Another thing I've done is I've just got a rack here that I would use to like cool cakes and stuff on. Got that on top of some kitchen roll on a baking tray so that I can put them on there and they can drip dry. If you have a deep fat fryer, I fully recommend using one of those because they are much better at controlling the heat. Doing it manually like this is not the best way in the world because controlling the heat on this is difficult. As soon as I put a bonbon in there, the heat's going to reduce. So you're basically having to keep an eye on the temperature manually with a thermometer. Um, I don't recommend doing this without a thermometer or a deep fat fryer that controls the temperature. Unless you're like an expert at frying stuff, like deep frying stuff, then fill your boots. This is them um, after being in the, the fridge for like half an hour 
Um, still raw, but two coat into crumb. I think they look quite good. So we're at 170 exactly right now. So we'll just try one. Keep a manual eye on the temperature and you're basically frying these for a few minutes until they're nice and golden brown. Another tip to frying is don't overcrowd the pan. I've put my tester in, I'm quite happy that I've controlled the heat and stuff now, I'm quite happy how it's going, so I can put another couple in. So I'm going to put four in maximum, keep an eye on the temperature, and then this is. My first one is now cooked, so that's why we have to make them between 20 and 25 grams, because um, they don't take long to brown, and you don't want them like being raw in the middle, essentially. So we'll put that, just there to chill. Now, if you weren't seven months pregnant and you weren't taking it chill, taking it slow, cooking everything individually, I'd recommend having your potatoes almost ready just now, your veg or however else you're going to plate because you'd want to plate these hot. These are actually just for main and Marcus's dinner, so I don't care if we have to microwave potatoes again, whatever, it's fine. But um, yeah, if you're making this for guests or something, if you want to make it fresh, multitask and do your all your bits at the same time. So I'm just going to open the cooked one to show you. You can see that it's absolutely steaming hot, absolutely roasting, fully cooked, perfect. So it's just to show you the inside and what they actually look like. So we'll take them out. Okay, so that is all of the meat ones done. We'll just plonk in our vegetarian ones there. These are only for me, so I don't mind frying them in the same oil, but obviously if you're a vegetarian and you don't like it, then don't do it, but just for me. Cool, so vegetarian ones are done. I think at this point you've got the point. This is this is how we do it. So I'm not going to show you me frying the rest of them because you, you've seen how I do it. So we'll just see if uh, Marcus is willing to eat his dinner on camera and try it for you or not. And then we'll see how we get on for you. Have a seat, sir. It's cold. I know, it's because I was frying stuff out of the windy. Why are you excited to see me? Right, here. Ah! 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 Demon! Demon! Demon child! He just farted. Right, so there's your peppercorn sauce. There is your cutlery. That one's cracked in half because I wanted to make sure it was definitely cooked and I wanted to show the camera the inside. Do you want some salt? I think we'll try it before you salt it. But um, I need to check. Mine is still frying, so I just think I'll be two seconds with mine. Okay. But, yeah. They look good. Thanks. They look professional. Profesh? Yes. So I tried to take it easy today and I've made everything separately, so the ties are made earlier and the. the What's his face? The sauce was made earlier and stuff, I'd make it all fresh, but it's not hot, so... Okay. It's not a big deal. Get out of that, I don't need to do it. Right. So, I'm, I'm showing this for everyone to make on Burns Night. That's dead pepper, so be careful. <laughs> Give me a fright, I like pepper. Okay. I have no taste buds, so I need stuff to be overpowering. Just to confirm you have no taste buds due to cigarettes and not Covid. Yeah, cigarettes, because I smoke so much. Yeah. I do have taste buds, they're just not as good as they used to be. It's age. What does that say about my cooking then? You don't have everything I cook because you can't fucking taste it. Well, it's good to know we can disregard all your opinions, Rank, and every, and every every single one of Sue's cooking videos. I totally. Every single one's just garbage because uh, you can't taste them. I will join you in just a wee second. Mine's still. Is that supposed to wait? No, no. Oh. You better then, son. So, what do you think of this as a burnt night meal? Do you think it'd be quite nice? Ah, uh, it's good. We better, we better neeps would be nice, but. I was thinking that myself. Am I not getting a rise out of you? Alright, yeah, agreed with me. No, because I like, desperately have your packages and you can tie it, don't you? Hmm. This is good. So I just made vegetarian ones because I'm not brave enough yet to try meat haggis. But Buddha, cease. But they turned out just the same. Like Yeah. It's not haggis though, is it? I wonder maybe if we should have shown them shown a picture of what we made before we uh, 
No, that's fine, they can see it. Do you want to do there? There you go. Aye, it's just because... There, there you go. It's just because uh, we spend all this time making it, but we never show it. Like, hello, this is what we have. Give, give some sauce. Give some sauce. You need a... Uh, you Jesus. need a you need a camera. All your stuff's dead far away. You need a camera pointing down. I know. Right, show it now. Now that it's half eight. <laughs> that was your good week one pose on there. How do you food thoughts pose? I don't know. Food thoughts are they people? Thoughts aren't people. But do you get food thoughts? I don't know actually. I don't think you do. You know. Yeah, you might do. You may. Seems unlikely. Unless it's those ones that like get paid to eat for candles and that. You know? Something a wee bit different. I eat this all the time. I know, but it's really <laughs> different from me because haggis leaps and tatties for like buns night, isn't it? No, uh, no, haggis bonbons are good. Plus you'd get a wee whiskey in your sauce and that. Plus it's truly Scottish. Because mm. we deep fry it. Mm. What do you need the sauce? In the drip. I won't force you to eat your entire dinner here, but it was just to try it and tell me what you thought of it. Bronson, can you stop crying? Bronson's there. Is it? He's still definitely crying though. He's just a miserable shite. He is a miserable shite. So, what do you think it? It is good. It is a nice dinner. Mmm. I approve. Definitely needs that sauce away. Yeah, it does. Do you want more? No. <laughs> it's alright. Would you want it? Aye, right, that'll do. Use your fork to get the rest out. Nice. Thank you. But thank you for trying. And do you recommend to the reviewers that they, they try this? Yes. I recommend that you eat this. Everyone always goes, ah, oh, look, haggis, haggis. I, I, I literally eat haggis every day for my every breakfast. Day. Yeah, you do. Like, right. I fucking love haggis. Um, You're all just pussies. Well, thanks for your contribution. You are welcome. Goodbye. Bye. So as ever, I am terrible at my job. I didn't take pictures of the food before we ate it, but trust, it was tasty. It still is tasty because I'm still eating it. So this is this is haggis bonbons in a peppercorn whiskey sauce. I highly recommend that you try it. If you can't get haggis where you are, then I'm sorry, but you can make like a black pudding bonbon. That's Scottish. Between this and my steak pie video that I made last week, very Burns Night-ish. So if you're into this kind of stuff and you're into like celebrating Scottish holidays and Scottish events, try this on Burns Night. I'm sure you'll love it. Again, just like last week, if you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. But also, more importantly, tell me in the comments below whether or not you want to see more actual meal videos from me. Because I'm so used to making cakes all the time that I don't know if you want to see this stuff. I don't know if you're like, why are you making savoury food? get it off my computer, I hate it. Or if you're like, well actually that's quite interesting, I wanna see more of that. So I need to know because I don't wanna make videos that no one wants to see. And I don't, also don't really want, it's a case of I don't wanna teach you how to suck eggs, you know? Like you might know how to make pies and, and bonbons and all that kind of stuff. So why am I then telling you? So, you know, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna eat my dinner. So thank you again and happy Burns Night if you're celebrating. So I'll see you later. Bye.